are known for to actually be, they are known for the commercial uh, uh, protests in the past and even presently. Yeah. How will you sustain this uh, revolution that we talked about that is coming in this? Oh. And secondly, um, you have found that you are going to win the election in the future. You are going to win the election in the uh, coming election. Yeah, are going to win. yeah, I want to ask you, don't you think this is going to be a counterproductive by staging the revolution? Because you cannot approbate and reproduce. Thank you very much. Uh, where we have reached in Nigeria is that Nigerians are frustrated, they are tired, and they have reached a point of no return in terms of rejecting the lackluster, mediocre, wicked, insensitive leadership in the country. And the revolution has become, therefore, inevitable. It is not, we didn't choose to go for a revolution. They chose it by ensuring that there was no level playing field in the last election. The election was a place we could have carried out a revolution of the ballot box. But they stole the ballot box. They hijacked materials that were meant for free and fair elections and as a result did not organize any election that was credible enough for people to have faith in the ballot uh, box. So people have asked that we take it to the next stage, not the next level, which is a fraudulent design to hoodwink our people. Uh, what we have realized is that for well, this country to even have free and fair elections in the future, there must be a shootdown. The people must come out and define who the electoral officers are, what the electoral laws are, and how fair, fair elections that are acceptable to them, that are credible, are organized. Not the one organized by their oppressors. So that is what revolution is about. I am not affirming to you that I can win election in 2023 under the same circumstances that I did it in 2019. I will be deceiving myself. Because even in my hometown, soldiers came and shot at the drone that we are using for monitoring the election. Soldiers were hijacking ballot boxes in front of us. Elections took place at the polling units, but the results were miscollated at the collection centers. Yeah. So we don't need to tell you that. Even INEC, as we speak now, has not been able to place the results of the election on their website because there's no way they can defend the figures that they put out. That is very clear. I'm not the only one asking for a revolution. 84% of Nigerians, according to a poll we conducted, want a revolution. They don't want war. But these people want to drive us into war so that we can all be exterminated at once. We don't want war. We want a very clean, quick, and succinct revolutionary process. Surgical. That we put an end to the shenanigans of government. That we put an end to oppression. The corruption of government. I mean, look at it. You have ministers who have active cases with EFCC being asked to bow and go in our National Assembly. You have ministers who have been engaging in high crimes. We have a president that is insensitive to the country that this country has fallen apart. Nigeria has failed, except Nigerians bundled, I mean, bond together and bundle these guys out of our national space. We are wasting our time. And don't ask me whether I'm afraid or worried about the legal implications of what I'm, I'm saying. I am carrying out a historical duty. Only history can judge me, not a prosecutor or a federal judge. I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried about that. You can't kill somebody who's not afraid of death. <laughs> and if I'm afraid of death, am I better than those people in Zamfara who are getting slaughtered every day? Am I better than those people who get killed by so-called kidnappers who just walk into the middle of the road with an AK-47? kill people and walk quietly back into the bush? Am I better than students who are getting rusticated for speaking out on campuses? Am I better than those kids who died before they could even see Nigeria that you know that they you know that they, they wanted to badly be? Am I better than women who can afford to eat? Am I better than those workers who are not getting paid? Am I better than people who are being who, who are who are suffering all over the country? No, no sir. Did by any time the party's money Never. In fact, we are the first to account for how much we raised. And after raised, after accounting for it, we place it on the internet so that if anybody has any challenge, they can raise the challenge. It's on the website of our party, aacparty.org, and my campaign websites. 
showore2019.org. You can download all the expenses and revenue, and we explain where the money came from. The party has a separate account that I never touched. In fact, I contributed to it. So there are two accounts. There's a presidential campaign account, and there's a party account. The party account has different signatories from my campaign account. The campaign, my own personal campaign account existed before the party. Yes. Yes. Is, that is why the media should not be lazy. But I know that a lot of the media in Nigeria is complicit because the explanation is there in the accounting. Every night I spent in Lagos, I paid for it from my personal money. You understand? I'm not a jobless politician. I'm not one of those politicians who rely on government money to run campaigns. But anything then that happened outside of Lagos, the campaign paid for. We explain everything. This is why itemized on our campaign expense as online as we speak. When we released that account, no media house carried it. They were not interested. But the moment a lie was cooked up mm -hmm. against us, it became headline. Because we are not only the enemy of the leaders of Nigeria, we are also the enemy of the media houses that they created. You want in Africa uh, Yes. Well, that discussion is public. I met in Amdi Kano in New York to discuss my concerns for Nigeria and to find out what are the grounds upon which we can have collaboration. Because I do not want Nigeria to break up. I've said it several times. I said it to him that if the entire continent of Africa is a country, it's not big enough for me. I'm a Pan-Africanist. But I also recognize that People cannot continue to exist under this laborious system of government we have and feel that they are part of Nigeria when Nigeria doesn't make them feel part of Nigeria. How many of you who are not even IPOP who feel part of Nigeria today? None. Because Nigeria alienates everybody. So that was the conversation we had and that conversation was made public. There was a recording of our, all of our conversations. Of course, there was a private one where we had uh, conversations that were private. I've always said it that I don't have any problem with IPOP. I have problem with the methodology they employ sometimes that seem to demonize other oppressed people. Because when you say to somebody he's a coward because he's Yoruba, they don't feel good. But maybe they even like your strategy of fighting for freedom. So bring everybody together. And I've seen some signs that show that Kanu listened to me. The other day he issued a release regarding what was done to the Shiites. That is what I said. You are the leader. As, as a person fighting for freedom, fight for everybody, whether they are friends or not. And you see the beauty of your struggle. And I, I really applaud him for doing that. I stand up for everybody, whether you are Shiites, you are Sunni, you, are, uh, you don't even believe in any religion. Nigeria is a secular state. Nigeria should protect you. Yes. Not only the AAC, we have coalitions that we are part of. Most Nigerians want this country to change, but our own, yes, recognized official vehicles the AAC. We also have the Take It Back movement that is, uh, that, you know, better the AAC. Okay, so, but my concern is that a movement like this should be relatively insulated from the kind of integration you suffered recently by some of your members who are trying to adapt the system, so to say. Now, if you have gone through this kind of situation, what is the... I mean, what, are, what is the mechanism you have around to ensure that this kind of thing does not have to be Look, let's go and look at the Christian Bible. Jesus Christ had 11, 12 people. One of them betrayed him. In the AEC, we have millions of people. So if five of them decide to betray us, we are still even doing well. There's no way you can rule out saboteurs, you know, betrayers, when you are fighting a system as huge as this. And the system has a lot of money to throw around. The question you should ask yourselves who are asking me about how I counted for it. So as the young man who I just AAC, where did he get the money from to hire AIT to live stream his hijack of uh, AAC? Where did he get the money from? Because our party account is still in our possession. We didn't see that any withdrawal was made to pay the media. But what, it was not only on channels, it was uh, on AIT. And they kept repeating it. They made headlines in all the newspapers. Even newspapers that did not cover our election covered when the Judas came and tried to hijack our party. So that tells you something. 
that this is very well organized. But look, did the work of Judas stop the revolution that Jesus was supposed to bring? Of no. course, it didn't, right? No. So it actually enhanced it. Mm -hmm. So that they came is the reason why we will know what to do next when we find people like that. But don't worry about them. Oh, everybody has a role to play. Some of them, their job is to betray. Mm -hmm. Some of them, their job is to fulfill. And we are in the fulfillment business, mm -hmm. not in the betrayer business. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. Some state chairmen are here. If you care to interview them, that's what will happen. Don't worry. Thank you. Hey, kids! Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Hey, madam. Please stop. Yeah.